without delay i am going to invite a, my first speaker who i call as a father of pulmonary medicine and his name is professor nadeem rizvi he has done his graduation in 1982 from dow medical college and then he did his training in uk uh, and completed his mrcp frcp later and he worked there in uk for 10 years he is a pioneer in starting uh, critical care thoracic and as well as uh, non invasive ventilation he trained multiple undergraduate post graduate and he has 14 year of experience of training them he has funded of the post graduate training he has multiple research paper uh, with him and he is uh, currently actively working in pakistan cancer society and we learn a lot from him welcome professor nadeem rivi and he is going to talk on a very important topic thank you irfan for your kind introduction with the permission of chair i would like to start the talk on this asthma which is one of the very common subject but before that i would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to talk about this topic which is a bread and butter for not only chest physician but all family physicians also and general physicians also so my talk will be very basic i'm not going to go into details about it but the problems which as a pulmonologist and even as a general physician we face uh i would like to discuss those problems and how to tackle with them now before starting i talk again i would like to introduce my baby this is the chest unit of jinnah post graduate medical center uh with the help of the philanthropist this was established from a ground level and is 110 bedded with a 16 bedded icu so this is my achievement now coming to the point asthma i always find it difficult to define than actually diagnosing and treating asthma it's a big definition but it is very important for anybody to know when they are diagnosing and treating because all these points which has been in the definition help us in diagnosis so it's a number one it's a chronic inflammatory disorder in which various cells take part which causes hyper uh, which causes inflammation leads to hyper responsiveness and hyper responsiveness leads to variable airway obstruction and this is the point which differentiate co uh, asthma from copd so i will come to this common cause of asthma from work and schools we have got very little knowledge about the local prevalence of this disease but this was a study which was published long ago published in lancet in children from 9 to 14 years checking their allergies and asthma and they found that it was around uh, 14% then from the platform of pakistan chess society we have done a survey in adult population and it came out to be around 5% in adult population multan was the place where it was the highest i think if i'm not wrong 5.5% coming to the pathophysiology still there are a lot of confusion regarding the understanding of pathophysiology of this disease but basically the mast cells which are the culprit cells they are being blamed for initiating the cascade of inflammation in bronchial asthma when a person gets sensitized to any allergen ige molecules are being made by the beta lymphocytes they get attached to these mast cells and when the subsequent exposure to the allergen which is big enough to bridge the gap between these two ige molecule a series of reactions start taking place in the mast cells there are certain preformed uh, mediators which are already present in the mast cell they are immediately released and they are responsible for causing bronchospasm which is responsible for causing breathlessness but then there is a, uh, the rupture of these mast cells the phospholipase which is present in these mast cells acts on the lipid membrane produces more mediators and they uh, causes chemotaxis to the various cells they all come into the mucosa and an inflammation take place in the airways so in a nutshell if i have to describe that anybody who is genetically predisposed along with the environmental factors will develop airway inflammation and airway inflammation 
will lead to hyper responsiveness and hyper responsiveness leads to variable airway obstruction which is responsible for causing the symptom of asthma there's a beautiful movie, uh, movie which have explained whatever i was trying to tell you but because of the limited time i will skip this showing now as far as the diagnosis is concerned asthma diagnosis is mainly clinical if you have anybody coming with repeated attacks of coughing breathlessness or whistling sound coming out of his chest you should suspect that this patient has got an asthma unfortunately in our setup these patients who have repeated bouts of coughing without thinking about asthma they are being treated with antibiotic cough syrups and it's helpful particularly if a patient is coming in between the attack but if it is having an acute attack then the signs are so obvious that you don't need to worry uh, it's not difficult to diagnose then and to confirm the diagnosis clinically you have a suspicion and to confirm the diagnosis you need a simple gadget which is called peak flow meter if you can show that there is a reversibility of 15% by checking the peak flow you confirm the diagnosis of asthma this is a gadget which is around 800 rupees available in pakistan but i have not seen many family physician using it even chest physicians don't tend to use it without that you cannot assess the severity without that you cannot diagnose asthma you cannot assess the severity of the asthma and you cannot assess the response to your treatment so it's so important simple gadget which you should be using this is a spirometry finding but the same thing you can do with a simple gadget a spirometry is a costly 2 3 lakh rupees but the same thing you can do with the Uh, peak flow meter check the peak flow the normal reading is this blue and in asthma because of bronchospasm it will come low you give them two puffs of bronchodilator like salbutamol 10 minutes later check the peak flow again if you find a 15% improvement from the baseline you confirm the diagnosis the problem is that many of these patients may have already taken bronchodilators when they come in so you may not see this reversibility immediately what you can do is to give them because there is an airway inflammation you can give them inhaled steroids or an oral steroids check the peak flow before starting and after 7 days of starting or 10 days of starting again you will find a reversibility and you confirm the diagnosis of asthma so it's not difficult even if you can't do that just give him a peak flow meter and ask him to check morning and evening peak flow the morning peak flow because of the catecholamine surge will always be low and in the evening the peak flow will always be high this is the evening and this is the morning if this variability is more than 15% ask him to make a diary you confirm that this is an asthma and finally there is another simple test which you can do in a clinic check the peak flow this is a very peculiar phenomena in asthma which occur which do not occur in any cause of breathlessness and that is that is Uh, bronchospasm induced by exercise because of hyperventilation so check the peak flow ask the patient to walk rap, uh, um, uh, fast for 5 or 6 minutes and check it again you will find that there is a drop in the peak flow and a intelligent asthma patient will tell you that when i am climbing the stairs i do not feel short of breath but as soon as i reach the landing i become short of breath and this is a very peculiar symptom of asthma and this is what you are trying to prove with the exercise testing of the peak flow so this with that you can easily do that management very simple steps that first make a diagnosis eliminate those causal factors which are responsible for aggravating asthma initiate the therapy education is the main uh, issue in any chronic illness and that's what i'm going to briefly talk about it and then finally monitoring the compliance the treatment is by two types of drugs one we call reliever drugs which immediately relieve the breathlessness or the symptom of asthma they are the bronchodilators and then we have got controller drugs which is responsible for reducing the inflammation which is there so these are the two groups of drugs which are available all are available in pakistan <clears throat> they are all available in pakistan so you have to use these two drugs so management is very simple and inhaler are the best way of treating these uh, asthma patients because the drug reaches directly into the airway doesn't produce side effects but again not many patients in pakistan are being treated with inhaler they are mostly on uh, tablet or injections form anybody who is requiring a bronchodilators once a week should be on anti inflammatory drug 
or preventive drugs. This is again a very important point that you have to remember because if you do not give them preventive drugs, you are just relieving the bronchospasm which is there, but the underlying problem is the inflammation, you are not addressing that. So you have to give them a preventive drug. And inhaled corticosteroid is the main, most important drug which not only reduces the frequency of exacerbation but also severity of exacerbation. You will not see patient dying or getting admitted if he is regularly using his inhaled corticosteroid as per prescription. Inhaled steroids act on all phases of inflammation, so they are the main stay of the treatment in asthma. This was a long, very old study which was done in New Zealand and presented in Oslo. What they were showing is that as in New Zealand the sale of inhaled canisters increased, the sale of inhaled corticosteroids increased in the market, the mortality started coming down there. So this should be remembered that almost all patients of asthma need inhaled corticosteroids. This is again a data which I took from the pharmaceutical company and you can see that the majority of our patients, almost over 85% of our patients are only on bronchodilators. They are not using inhaled corticosteroids and that is the main problem. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do I have a few minutes more? Kitne minute denge aap mujhe? Two minutes. Challenge. If you want two minutes, I will finish in two minutes. So this was my main topic that asthma beyond prescription. To prove this, I'm going to show you three shortly prescriptions. This is Mr. Malaria. This is a very short prescription, oral medicine. This patient, when you prescribe that, if the diagnosis is good, this patient, you can rest assured that the patient is going to get better because he's going to take medicine. Mr. Diabetes, again, this is a chronic illness. Prescription is well written. Do you think this patient? Yes, this patient will remain because the patient himself inherently knows that he has to take the medicine. If he doesn't take the medicine, the consequences will be apparent next day. His blood sugar is going to up. His family plays a very positive role. The wife is always after him to take the medicine. But coming to the asthma, again, the prescription is okay, but we do not know whether this patient know which inhaler has to be used, when, how to use the inhaler. That is very important. And again, the family plays a very negative point, uh, very negative influence when it comes to asthma and if you have prescribed inhaler to these patients. Subse pehla kaha jayega ke are aapne inhaler de diya jodho habituating hai, isko to habit ho jayegi iski. Tumne bachche ko steroid de diya, how come is that possible? You cannot give steroids to a child, so all sorts of impediment is there when you are treating. Treatment of acute and chronic illness is different. In acute illness, you just need clinical acumen and diagnostic blindness and cutting edge treatment. But in chronic illness, success comes from doing simple things correctly, doing them repeatedly correctly, and taking the patient along with them. So this is the steps of treating uh, chronic illness like asthma that you have to go along with the patient as in educating them. Asthma is a do-it-yourself kind of disease just two simple statement I want to make it that drugs work where they reach and drug only work for them who take their medicine, who take them. So this is very simple. In cases of respiratory system, the, there are a lot of challenges when you are using asthma because you see nature wants to avoid anything going into the airway. Your nose is at an angle with your face. You have got here in your nostrils, which are beating outwards, you have got turbinates, epiglottis, glottis. These all things are trying to prevent anything going into it. So inhaler, meter dose inhaler are such that they circumvent all these issues and take the medicine directly into that. But remember that it is a double-edged sword. If it is taken correctly, you will have the desirable effect. If it is taken incorrectly, you will have no effect whatsoever and patient lose in uh, faith in inhalers. Inhalers are available in different form. They are very convenient devices, but convenient devices only when they are being used appropriately, non inappropriately. Those who cannot use, they should use the spacer. Uh, then we have powdered uh, dose inhaler also available in Pakistan. Nebulizers are over prescribed in Pakistan. This is the biggest issue. They think that children cannot use inhalers. If you know how to give them to children, every child be, should be using inhalers. So everybody can use inhalers. So I will stop here. There are a lot of things which I wanted to discuss about asthma. But what I'm trying to say is that if you really want to treat your asthma patient, 
the treatment start after writing a prescription. Diagnosing and treating asthma is not a rocket science. It is the, it is the time which you spend with your patients after you have written a correct prescription. I stop here. Thank you very much.